Memory management is a very hard topic in C++. I know this because in the beginning of my career as a software developer, I struggled a lot from raw pointers. Memory corruption, double deletion and memory leaks were common problems for me. However, you don't need to learn some complicated memory management strategy, because C++ offers simple instrument for that, smart pointers. Now, when I master them, I don't fight with the pointers anymore, I deliver it interested features instead. To achieve the same, you need to follow four simple and straightforward steps. Learn about smart pointers in general, understand the difference between shared pointer and unique pointer, figure out the proper use case for weak pointer, introduce smart pointers into your code base. The first step in learning smart pointers is to understand the general idea behind them. Let's look into the lifetime of the object allocated on the heap. Its lifetime begins with explicit memory allocation and constructor invocation and finishes with explicit destruction via delete. And it's a problem, because forgetting the allocate the memory explicitly leads to the memory leaks. However, C++ has another type of object managed automatically by C++ runtime, where objects are destructed automatically. For example, local and temporary variables, class members, static and thread local variables. For all those objects, the structure is called automatically. And here's the general idea behind smart pointers. Let's bind the lifetime of dynamically allocated object to the lifetime of a handler managed automatically. The handler allocates memory in the constructor and deallocates it in the destructor. Since destructor is invoked automatically, memory is released without the leaks. If this concept sounds familiar to you, that is because it is specific application of RAI pattern resource equation is initialization. Understanding the general idea behind smart pointers is a great, but what can I use in a real code in STL? And there is two general type of smart pointers in STL, unique pointer and shared pointer. Unique pointer is the simplest smart pointer. It owns object exclusively. It can be copied, only moved. When smart pointer is destructed, managed object is also destroyed. No sophisticated logic, but also no overhead. That is why I'm using unique pointer by default. Shared pointer is different. Multiple shared pointer instances can manage the single object. It contains a reference counter, which increments on copy of shared pointer and decrements on destruction of shared pointer. When the last shared pointer is deleted, Reference counter reaches zero and managed object is deleted. Since shared pointer has additional overhead due to the reference counter, use it only when you really need it. Both pointer types overloads the arrow operator, so accessing the managed object is just as simple as with raw pointers. When I first learned about the smart pointers in C++, the most confusing part for me was to decide when to use shared pointer and when to use unique pointer. The rule of thumb, use shared pointer only if you need shared ownership on an object, otherwise prefer unique pointer. For example, a database connection may be shared across multiple services handling user requests. Using shared pointers ensures that as long as single service holds a reference, database connection is alive. If you need to upgrade unique pointer to a shared pointer, it's possible, but not vice versa. Thus, consider using unique pointer as a returning value for the factory methods. By this moment, we covered two steps about smart pointers. Basically, you can use them in practice, but there is still one important topic circular references. A reference counter mechanism isn't perfect. Imagine a situation. Object A 
holds a shard pointer to the object P and object P contains shard pointer to object A. Even if there is no other shard pointers to object A or object P, the reference counter won't reach zero. Thus, it's a memory leak. To fix that, STL provides weak pointer that does not increase reference counter in shared pointer. Replacing one instance of shared pointer with a weak pointer breaks the circle. Weak pointer acts as a soft link to a shared pointer and provides method lock to obtain shared pointer when needed. The general usage pattern. When you need access to the shared pointer, use method lock to obtain temporarily shared pointer object. If method returns invalid shared pointer, it means that underlying shared pointer was destructed. Otherwise, use obtained shared pointer safely. Now we come to the final step, how to migrate your source code from raw pointers to smart pointers. Since smart pointers overloads arrow operator, most of the member function calls won't be changed. That means you don't need to update much of your source code base. However, what does require changes? Decide which type of smart pointer to use in each case, use unique pointer by default and shared pointer only if you need to share ownership, check circular references and replace shared pointer with a weak pointer if needed. Smart pointers can even wrap zero pointers, especially when extra action is needed at the destruction. For example, SQLite database pointer needs closing the database and releasing the memory. To overcome this, both unique pointer and shared pointer supports custom destructors. By using them, you can ensure safer cleanup without memory leaks. Uniq pointer takes custom destructor as a template parameter, so the type declaration looks a bit weird. In this example, I open a database, then, if it's done successfully, pass the pointer raw db to a constructor of unique pointer. When object db is destructed, unique pointer invokes function sqlite3close and uses managed raw pointer as a parameter. For shared pointer, situation is different. It takes custom destructor as a constructor parameter, but logic remains the same. On destruction, the last shared pointer sqlite3close is invoked and it obtains managed row pointer as a parameter. In this way, database is closed and memory is released. Smart pointers make our C++ programs safer and allow us developers to concentrate on features instead of low-level memory management. Now, when you learned how smart pointers are working under the hood, when to use shared pointer and what is the best place for unique pointer, how to overcome circular reference problem, you can easily introduce smart pointers into your code base and save yourself a lot of debugging headaches. If you like this video, give it a thumb up and subscribe to the channel and see you in my next episode about C++.